fiddlers, welcome to today's fiddle video. Today we're going to be talking about melodic variations. One thing I love about fiddling is the flexibility of it. We can take a traditional tune that's been played for many, many years and put our own creative spin on it. So if this is kind of the basic tune, we could try doing this or that. it can feel a little mystifying and maybe a little intimidating to figure out where do I even start with coming up with melodic variations for a tune. So today I'm going to give you some tips on how to come up with your own melodic variations. We're going to come up with three today and we're just going to talk about how do you do this on your own. If you like sheet music and practice tracks for the tune that we're talking about today, The Sailor's Wife, you can find a link in the description for that. All right. Let's get started. When you're coming up with melodic variations, there are a couple different ways you might approach this. One way would honestly just be trial and error without any rules, without any restrictions. You just play the tune a bazillion times and see what happens. You try just throwing a bunch of random notes in there. You try a couple arpeggios, you try whatever. And you can come up with some awesome variations that way, especially if you've been listening to a lot of fiddlers and have an idea of what those melodic variations could sound like. But if you find it helpful to have some sort of boundaries around the possibilities so that you can have an idea of where to start, here's another way you could do it. You can take one section of a tune, a small section of it, and just think of a few different categories of variations you could try in that section of the tune. So we're gonna take the very beginning of The Sailor's Wife, and it goes like this. That's the phrase we're going to be working with. And we're going to take that phrase and we're just going to try a couple different things. For starters, the first variation that we might try is taking a part of the tune and playing it down an octave. If you've been watching my channel, you might realize that is something that I do a lot. And that's just because it is cool, I think. So here's what playing a section of the tune down an octave might sound like. <laughs> Playing down an octave just means you're taking the melody and transposing it, so moving those notes eight notes lower. So for example, if your melody is going that first note, A, you would find the A that is one octave lower, eight notes lower. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if that section of the tune goes, you would go. So here's the section of the tune that we are going to change. So starting that out an octave lower, it would sound like this. But now if we wanted to continue the melody down an octave, we have run out of space because we can't go lower than a G. So we're gonna find a way to get back to the normal melody from there. We need to get back to a D because that's where the next phrase of the tune starts. So we're gonna go and then walk back up one, three, and then D. So there's our first variation playing a section of the tune down an octave and then working our way back to the normal melody. Here's that variation in the context of the whole A part. Variation number two. For this variation, we're going to look at a way we can take a little pattern that presents itself in the tune and repeat it a bunch of times. Here's how this could sound. So what we're doing is we're taking the part of the tune that goes and we're just taking that downward stepwise motion for three notes and doing that again, but continuing the pattern going down. So then starting with your second finger, then starting with your first finger, then starting with the open E, and then we land on D, 
The next part of the tune is going to start on an open D. So we could play that as a double stop and then just start that next part of the tune from there. So putting the whole A part together, here's how that would sound. Okay, so moving on to variation number three, we are going to try a rhythmic pattern that involves some string crossings. Here's what it's going to sound like in this tune. Awesome. We're playing a jig which is in 6 8 time and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in each group of three notes, the beat is really on the first note in that set of three. That's where our sort of melody line is going to be happening. We've also got this open string note on another string which we're playing in between those more melodic notes. So it's going 3, A, A, low 1, A, A, low 2, A, A, E, A, A, and then we're playing a D right there. Again, this is leading into the part of the tune that starts with a, a D down here. So we're going to play a double stop at the end which will allow us to get back to the tune. You could also choose different melodic notes there if you wanted. You could go... Either way would sound pretty cool. Here's how both of those would sound in the context of the A part. melodic variation possibilities. There are so many possible ways to vary a tune out there, but I hope this was helpful and maybe gave you some ideas. So here's one thing that I wanted to caution you about as you're coming up with variations. Very often as melody instruments, we may be coming up with these variations on our own in the absence of chords and a backup instrument, and so our melodic variations might not fit with the chords. So if you are going to be playing with a backup instrument, it can really help to know what the chords are going to be. You can either have them written down, have someone record a backup track for you, and then you can see if your variations are going to fit within that. And having the chords can actually be a really helpful tool as you're coming up with your variations, because if you see, for example, that the tune has a D minor chord, then you can come up with a variation that is just notes within that chord. Just one final note, I definitely recommend listening to a ton of recordings of your favorite fiddlers and really thinking about what are they doing in their variations. Are they playing down an octave? Are they using string crossings? Or even more subtle types of variations that don't really majorly alter the melody, so things like double stops or things like ornamentation. Sitting down with a recording and really intentionally listening and learning from it is so helpful. And then you can see how you might be able to apply those sorts of variations to other tunes. All right, fiddlers, thanks so much for tuning in for today's fiddle video. I hope you liked it. If you would like sheet music and practice tracks for the tune featured today, The Sailor's Wife, you can find a link in the description for that. You'll also find a link for a whole bunch of other fiddle tunes as well. And there's also a link for sheet music that includes today's variations in case you want to try them out yourself. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you know when more fiddle videos are coming your way. Have a wonderful day and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.